fantastic. More. Oh yeah. Ha. <laughs> More. stuff happening down there at the bottom end of the Ooh. hello and welcome back g-man here in the studio today i'm showing you my xavcf a little bit later on in this video, I will show you how I made those patches at the beginning of the video. What is the XAVCF? Well, it's an Eurorack adaptation of the Oberheim OBXA filter in Eurorack format. As with the original synthesizer, there's two completely different circuits in here to choose from. Uh, mode 1 is what I'm calling their original two-pole filter. It is derived from a state variable circuit. And then mode 2 is the original 4-pole filter. It is a standard datasheet configuration of the CEM3320. Now, this filter uses uh, the reissue Alpha AS3320 chips, and these are perfect replicas of the Curtis chips. Fantastic sound. You will be amazed with this one. So let's get into it. As I've stated, there's a architecture is two di completely different circuits. On the one side, you will see that I've also derived an additional one pole bandpass from the state variable configuration. Sounds fantastic. And then over in mode two, I have pulled the output from the one pole low pass. This is just a fantastic Oberheim sound. You will love that one as well. So it also has two inputs, so you can mix two different PCOs together. Two input CVs for controlling the frequency cutoff. Uh, on this filter, I have configured CV2 to have uh, volts per octave input. So this filter will track. The CV1 is it has more range so that uh, if you have some modulation signals that are a little bit weaker this will actually boost a little bit more than what CV2 does. So I've also added CV3. This is for controlling the resonance. It's an interesting little addition that you would not find on the original synthesizer. Let's get to the demos. Um, mode 1, we're going to go through low pass. I'm just going to use a simple sawtooth waveform coming from my 101 VCO. Nothing else there. So let's hear what that sounds like. without any resonance. Let's add some resonance in. Start to see a little bit of a peak there. More resonance. all kinds of stuff going on there then flat out this is going to hurt so I'm going to turn down the input down you'll notice those peaks were kind of going in one general direction that's because of uh, some clipping diodes that are in that state variable configuration. So check it out again. Look for the peaks going in that direction. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, let's check out the one pole. Turning the resonance all the way down. One pole, you're going to hear some bleed through because even though it's 
at the crossovers at zero, it's because of the slope allowing so many of the frequencies in being one pole, you could expect that. So if you don't want any sound at zero cutoff, then follow it up with a VCA to gate it so that no sound will come through when you don't want it to. Zero resonance. Let's kick it all halfway. down the uh, output volume on my mixer just because it was going to clip out my Tascam DR05 recorder, so don't want that. Now let's go over to mode 2 and see what that sounds like. First the 4 pole. It's a bit quieter, so I go ahead and turn up my input a little bit. with zero resonance and halfway still not much going on there it's not as wild as the uh, mode one resonance Let's kick it up all the way. So that resonance is a little bit more musical, a little more, bit more toned down. Let's go to one pull. You know you want to hear it once again. You'll hear the bleed through because even though the frequency is at zero, because of the slope is so far out, it's allowing a lot of the frequencies through past the cutoff. Once again, if you want no sound when you don't uh, at zero, go ahead and chase it with a VCA to gate that audio. So let's see what this one sounds like. out there, I'm sorry. I could probably turn down my input again. You're starting to get those little peaks there. This one to me is just such a typical Oberheim great sound. Now resonance up all the way. stuff happening down there at the bottom end of the frequency in the lower frequency spectrum. Once again I was turning down the level on my mixer as I neared the top of the frequency cutoff. 
just to watch my levels there. So let's talk about the uh, volts per octave tracking. So I'm going to go back to mode one. And you'll hear it in the background there, actually. Describe what I'm doing here. There's two ways to use your volts per octave tracking. One is to uh, patch your input, turn it up, and then kick in some resonance and find a sweet spot. And the volts per octave, even though you play up and down on the keyboard, it will follow that sweet spot around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm running my volts per octave through a buffer first. So that will be available to light oscillator. Let's find a sweet spot on the resonance. Okay, that one's pretty cool. And now what I'll do is I'll follow that around using my keyboard. And you'll see what I mean. Now if I didn't have volts per octave, here's what that would sound like. Because the frequency isn't moving at all with the keys that I'm pressing on my BeatStep Pro. So that's one way to use the tracking. The other way is to use for a sine wave oscillator. So if you just turn this up, it becomes a sine wave. So I want to run, I could turn off my input. Okay, resonance up all the way, volts per octave up all the way, and then I will plug in a CV into that input. This is coming directly from my BeatStep Pro. Alright, there we go. Volts per octave directly in. Uh, I want to turn the frequency all the way down, resonance all the way up, and then the volts per octave, this has to be all the way up. Uh, this will correspond with the notes on the keyboard, like C, D, E, F, G, A. Those will be the notes that you're playing. I have a little sequence program into my beat step, very simple, but I'll just be transposing that up and down the keyboard. So you can also do that in mode two with the four pole. So that one sounds a little bit more tame. <laughs> so I can kick that one back up. Same sequence. Okay. The tracking isn't bad on this. This is an analog device, so the tracking isn't going to be pitch perfect like anything that's digital. So, one pole. You know you want to hear the one pole tracking, so let's do that. Cool, and may as well do the band pass mode in mode one and see. That one's crazy as well. Sorry about that. But it's a different sound. Get on with doing some patches. I'm going to do 
the Tom Sawyer synth sweep that I did in my uh, first like teaser video. I want to copy, oh, I'm sending my volts per octave from the beat step to and into a buffer and I'm going to send that to CV2. We're going to do some pitch tracking on that and then I'm going to plug in my 101 VCO into one. Let's go back to two pole low pass. So 101 VCO Sawtooth, square wave, pulse width modulation is coming from Batumi, and then a little bit of sub oscillator. Let's see what that sounds like. So there's that. And then I'll add my synthesizer box into input 2. It also has pulse width modulation. And we'll let them slightly be detuned. The Pittsburgh box also has sawtooth and sub oscillator as well that's how i come up with those really big fat tones so and i'll slightly detune them so they're slightly phasing here so there's that and then i need some resonance for this to work i want to turn my volts per octave back up And then I want to add some delay for my eventide time factor. This module is going to be your delay's best friend. So let's have it. There's the delay. Also run the main pitch through a uh, slew limiter for a glide sound. You'll find the uh, sweet spot and then it will track. When this is up it will just track that sweet spot across the keyboard. Hear that in four pole and see what happens with that. I need to boost my inputs a little bit. More. Oh yeah. Ha. <laughs> One pole. It's gonna be loud, so I'll turn those down. That's a lot of fun. You don't have to use the tracking dual envelope in the CV1. Let's make some bass sounds. I've got some attack. Man, that one pull sounds so good. Let's give it some resonance. attack let's do that let's get rid of the delay so you can hear what's going on 
Sometimes your inputs may be overloaded, so you might dial back your inputs there. I am sending a lot to it, so I just have the sawtooth and pulse coming from my 101 VCO. Back to one pole on the mode 2. Shorter envelope time. Oscillator, sub oscillator back in. Let's bring the delay back in. Let's make it a little sequence. haven't shown what the resonance input does, so let's add that in. Coming LFO from Batumi. So much fun. So that's the XAVCF. Uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.